Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, recommended system requirements. If like me you research a game's minimum system requirements before buying it, then you'll know how relieving it is thinking that according to the game developers, you can run a certain game on your PC. Most of the time if you meet the minimum requirements you'll assume that you won't have many issues with that title unless it's severely unoptimized. In fact I tested this out in the past when I ran a few games using their own minimum requirements with fairly okay results except for Ark Survival Evolved which as expected ran terribly because at the time it suffered from that aforementioned optimization problem and wouldn't run on much without severe stutter but it did go to show that what's written down in terms of requirements doesn't always mean much. Just like developer recommended minimum requirements, recommended requirements may also leave you a little perplexed. There are no clear guidelines to let you know what sort of performance you should expect if you meet them. Some say that if you meet the recommended specs then the game should run well at medium settings and others say high to very high, but people's idea of a game running well will vary. For example, I'm mostly happy with a solid 30 frames per second because I've spent most of my time as a PC gamer working with tight budget Budgets, but others may need 60 FPS to feel comfortable. So what I thought we'd do today would be to put some of this old hardware collection to further use today and see what you can expect from a few games if your PC matches their respective recommended system requirements. Of course performance will differ on a game by game basis but it should be fun to see how different games fare against their own recommended specs. But there's also a twist. The first two games are terribly optimised PC ports that will barely run on their minimum system specs so it should be interesting to see if the hardware that the developers themselves recommend will actually run these awfully unoptimized games well. So let's get into it. Kicking things off with GTA 4 because we all know what a pain that was to run when it came out, and it still is. Rockstar themselves recommended a 2.4GHz quad-core or Phenom X3 with an 8600 from Nvidia or 3870 from AMD. I'm using a Core 2 Quad Q6600 at 2.4GHz and a 3870, so at 1080p the game stuttered quite a bit, but the average frame rate came out at around 40 frames per second with the lowest available settings. Turning things up saw a drop in frames as you'd expect, so things were best left at low. 720p saw no real improvement but there was less stuttering. I believe the graphics card is the issue, not to mention the recommended 2 gigs of RAM, but I tested GTA 4 first because it is considered one of the worst ports ever to come to PC. Because of the possible variations with resolutions and settings, I've included results from 720p and 1080p tests with different graphical settings to give you a wider idea of performance. I then tried to Saints Row 2. Oh, how I struggled to run this on my old PC. The developers recommend a dual core 3.2 GHz Intel or AMD CPU, as well as 2 gigs of RAM and a 256 MB GPU with Shader Model 3. The 8800 from Nvidia or 3850 from AMD are mentioned, so we'll be using the 8800 GT 256 MB version, along with an E8600, which is of course clocked at 3.3 GHz and came out before the game. It made sense starting with the low settings which was a good job because turning things up meant constant frame rate drops below 30 fps at 1080p and lower resolutions didn't really make any real difference. Moving on to a couple of personal favourites now and with Far Cry 3, Ubisoft recommend an i3-530 or Phenom X2 along with a 1GB DX11 GPU in the form of a GTX 480 or 5770. We opted for the i3 and the AMD card along with the suggested 4 gigs of RAM. At 1080p results were pretty good with 40 frames per second on average with the medium preset. Low settings meant we'd see an increase to about 46, but any higher and the game would drop below 30 on some occasions. If you wanted a closer to 60 FPS gaming experience, 720p with the high preset would give you a nice balance between graphics and gameplay, with 56 FPS on average. Finally it's the turn of the ever popular Overwatch. These recommended settings are interesting because apparently they are actually targeting a 60 FPS experience with the medium settings, and to achieve that you'll apparently need a Core i5, Phenom X3 and a GTX 660 or HD 7950. The specific i5 wasn't mentioned but pairing an i5 650 with a 660 meant an average of 70 and I didn't see much point in messing around with other options because just as described the recommended 
amended system requirements did allow for a 1080p 60fps plus gaming experience at medium settings just as was stated on the spec sheet. Now of course different games will provide different results as I mentioned and settings play a big part but it goes to show that recommended requirements just like minimum requirements don't really mean much and are sometimes over inflated to allow for an unoptimized game to run well. It's easy to tell people they need better systems, but in reality a lot of developers do skimp on PC ports to focus on console performance, which is a bit annoying, especially when that may lead to huge day one patches aimed at immediately fixing frame rates. It was fun seeing how different games react to their own respective recommended system requirements, but your best bet is always looking up performance reviews and benchmarks from other sites of a game before buying it to get a real sense of how it runs especially if like me you are a budget gamer thank you for watching guys and hopefully i'll see you all in the next one